Uh, our next speaker will be two of them, will be Philippe Lacaz and Pierre Morinier. Uh, we all know them. Philippe is the managing director at Coton, uh, and Pierre, oh, sorry, timer done. Morinier. Uh, Morinier, I'm sorry. <laughs> he has been in La Rochelle for more than 25 years now as a biologist and taking care and already inspired us earlier in this meeting with these wonderful images. Uh, and they are going to talk about an aquarium for algae, which is probably something very different and interesting from what we are used to see. So, please. Wait a second. Well, I hope it will work. After Joao, it's not an easy task to speak after Joao because everybody knows he's very good, but what I didn't know is that he breaks computers. So <laughs> I hope that it will work. Otherwise, Joao, let's meet in the coffee break. Um, so I'm very pleased to have the chance to introduce now our new tank for algae that we have built in uh, our aquarium in La Rochelle uh, two years ago. Uh, I'm pleased to share the floor now with Pierre, uh, as it has been told, he's our head curator since 25 years, and uh, happy, happy birthday, because I think it's this year. Okay. Uh, we missed the presence of Mathieu Couton, who leaded this uh, issue, but unfortunately he couldn't come back here. So, uh, this paper is going to focus on mainly five issues. The first issue is what we call the new intertidal zone of our aquarium. The second issue will be the building constraints that we had as we were doing that in an existing aquarium. Our aquarium opened in 2000, so it is 13 years old. The, technical, the third point is going to be the technical spe specifications, so a focus on the algae tank, so all the specs that Pierre gave to us. Then we're going to show you how did we manage to reach the specs of Pierre. And then Pierre is going to take the floor in order to do an update of the two years experience that we had for this aquarium. So we thought in our aquarium that we needed to refurbish the entrance of the aquarium. We're going to tell you why, because to our point of view, it didn't work that well. So we were looking for more space and to target to enlarge our existing intertidal zone. For those of you who didn't have the chance to visit us, our aquarium is based in La Rochelle. It is a, an 8,000 square meters aquarium. It is 3 million li liters of uh, wat water, and it opened, as I told you, in 2000. So we have an average of 800,000 visitors per annum since we opened it. For all of you who came, so here you have the entrance to the aquarium, then we enter to the aquarium here, we have the sim simulator here, and then we go to a big jellyfish tank, which is a 360 degrees tank, inside of which we have a 360 degrees acrylic tube. So the visitors come from here, they have the simulator, which does move, then we have an open, I mean, I mean a door here which opens, and then we enter to this tube. And then this is, in green, the zone that we wanted to change. Because after the tube here, we had a wall, which is a, but a bottleneck. And then we had a wall here, a wall here, a wall here. So all this zone, to our point of view, didn't work that well. These tanks, which are tidal tanks, we kept them because, to our point of view, they worked pretty well. This is a picture of uh, the entrance, which was before. As you can see, we have here the wall that we have to break. We have here these small aquariums that we can see. This, this wall is the wall that we can see here. So it has been completely broken. This is another picture where you can see uh, by here all the entrance that we had to break. This is another picture of the entrance. So this wall was broken, this wall was broken, and so we had access to the, I mean, to the door and to the space which is behind this um, volume. That's the angle of the picture. And that's the last picture that I wanted to show of uh, what we had to change. So this is the tunnel behind that, so, I mean, the tube behind this wall. So the visitors were coming this 
way, and so we had to break this wall, this wall. Okay, this is the angle of the picture that I show to you. Okay, so what we wanted to do, breaking all the walls, as it has been said, is that afterwards this tube, we enter into a new zone. This zone has been kept, as you can see, and this is the new zone where we did an algae tank that we're going to focus now, and we did other small tanks of tidal zones, like these three bu bubble tanks and these three small tanks. And this is the uh, algae tank that we're going to speak about. This is another angle of this, and this is how it looks at the end. So uh, this is the angle where the picture has been taken, and so you can see here the three bu bubbles that we have done, and we have three square sphere tanks here also, and again, this is the tidal tank we're going to speak about, and this is the picture of all the space we could uh, get after br breaking this wall. This is the angle of the picture, and this is the last picture I wanted to show you, and this is the tank we're going to speak, where we can see the move of the water, which has an amplitude, which is of 30 centimeters, what we wanted to have, actually. That's the angle of the picture. So, the second point is the building constraints. As I told you, um, we are in an existing building. It means that uh, we have a low floor charge uh, acceptance, which is more or less 500 kilos per square meter. So that's a huge problem. Then we had to remain, as in all your aquariums, open during the works. And the third lim limitation is that we are uh, having some doors which are not that big, so we could, couldn't do, I mean, exactly the volume that we wanted to do. So, the technical specs that Pierre Gale gave us for the algae tank. First of all, what we want is that the volume inside moves. We don't want a stream. Everybody knows how to do a stream. You put a valve on the right-hand side, a valve on the left-hand side, and then you make it work al al alternatively when and, I mean, and the other. But it's not that that he wanted. It is not a wave that we wanted also. We know all of us how to do waves through a balloon which is going to the surface of the water, through a board which is doing that, uh, through a small tank which is pouring on the big tank. So we all of us know how to do waves, but it's not what we wanted. We didn't want to have a splash neither, okay? Because this is the way that we do splashes in our aquarium, but it's, I mean, it works, but it's not that easy because you have to focus on the volume one, which has to be coherent to the volume two in order to get the effect that we want. So after seeing all the uh, poss possibilities that we had, and again, what we wanted, what we wanted is to have the volume of water doing exactly as my hands are doing, going up and down and going from right to left. That's what we wanted. And we wanted an amplitude to be approx like 15 centimeters high and 15 centimeters down means an amplitude from top to bottom of 30 centimeters approx. This is what at the end we have, means that you have the water here and you have the water there and the global mass is doing that and that. So how did we manage to reach these specs? The size of this tank is this one. So it's approx four meters by two meters by two meters. Okay, so that's not a big tank <coughs> because of the constraints. <coughs> it has more or less a 21 tons, that's his, I mean the weight, and it has a 2.6 tons per square meter, which is five times the floor acceptance. That's why we had to do many uh, works on the civil works in order to support the weight of this aquarium. Uh, this is the size of the acrylic, which is a human-sized acrylic, 1.7 meters tall and 3.7 meters uh, long. So how does it work? When the system is off, we have the level that we want it to have, which is approx 1.7 meters, which is the eye of a human being, more or less. Then we have the visible volume, which is the volume that is seen by the visitors. This is the volume which is seen by the visitor. I call it V3. Then we have an air pump, which is here, okay. Then we have a pneumatic but butterfly valve, which is there, I will explain all that. Then we have a closed and hidden air vo volume that I called V1. 
And then we have a hidden water vo volume that I called V3. Again, the visitor can only see that, 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 and the upper zone. And then we had an isophonic box in order to uh, reduce the noises when the valve is opened and the air goes uh, through this uh, uh, zone here. So, how does it work? We have here a valve. So, for, for, first of all, we close the valve. Means that this pump is w working 100% of the time. The air pump is always working. So, the green arrow goes up, it cannot go at the at the right-hand side, and so it will uh, enter into the volume that I call V1 here, which is air, and it will pre pre pressurize, excuse me, this volume, which is V2 here, so the water is going to be impulsated by here, and here we have a big hole, and then it's going to create the movement that we want it. This one was, as I told you, an amplitude of 15 on top and 15 here, uh, below uh, the level uh, lim limit level. And then we have here a volume V4, which is the volume that we wanted to create, and we have here the volume V1, which is the, ox I mean the air vo volume. So this one has to be bigger than V4 in order not to come back with water in the air pump. Of course, we are doing that during four seconds, five se seconds, and then we open this valve here, okay? So it means that it's the op opposite. The air goes by here, tack, and the air comes by the top here, so it means that the water is going the other way around. And so it works this way. So we can play with the frequency of this valve. This is always open, and what we play with, 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 the, with the computer here is in this valve, so it can be open four seconds, it can be closed 10 seconds, so we can play as much as we want in order to have here the amplitude that we want it. So that's the way at the end it works. As far as light is concerned, we put it four, excuse me, Joao, it's your work, okay. We put it here, four lamps of uh, 1,000 watts and of 10,000 degrees kelvins, okay? The interior plumbing, we began thinking that that was the right option. So in blue, you have the return from the life support system. In red, you have the overflow. And in uh, green, you have all the outlets to go to the life, life support system. And so here we had a skimmer, because we thought at the first stage that we were going to work with a gravitational life support system. But then we changed because of space in our te technical zones. So we opted for a 100% pressure filter system, and then we were afraid by having that, we could have some air going in the pressurized fi filters. And so we di didn't like that, and we came back to a more simple system which does work very well, even if at the end of the story this line is not here, it's above, because we are working with a wave 12 hours per day and 12 hours per night per day means in the night we stop, I mean the wave, so we are happy to have this uh, outlet coming from the life support system in order to, uh, to ox oxygenate our surface of uh, water. Some pictures now about the building, so it was not very easy because we have to do a, wa wa a water titus inside, which is not very easy to access, another picture. And then we were scared because here we are going to have, as you have seen, uh, I, mean, I mean, the volume goes from left to right each uh, seven seconds, so we were, I mean, afraid that the FRP could be da damaged by the fact that the water is going here and there all time. So we began doing F FRP, then we did, excuse me, we did, uh, then we put, uh, I mean, a layer of thermal insulation because as Pierre is going to say, I mean, the water here can be quite low in te temperature. And then we put again a new FRP la la uh, layer. And then as I told you, okay, see okay. So then we did a lot of protections in order all the structure to be uh, well done. Okay, there you can see some pictures of the rock work and then the installation. I will go very fast in the installation. Now, before giving the floor to uh, Pierre, wait a second. We're going to show you uh, with Skile a quick movie. Okay. 
plus qu'il y avait le son. So you can see how the, I mean, the volume moves as we wanted. That was at the very beginning, so we didn't have the amplitude that we got at the end in the picture that we have showed. Yes, okay. Tu vas chercher PowerPoint. On va. Non, non, on va ici. So the, the title of this presentation could be um, an aquarium for algae with artificial light because uh, in Oceanopolis they already have uh, algae in, um, in an aquarium but in this tank we, we were very happy to, to have um, a growth and a new, uh, several, gener uh, several algae growing and breeding in the, inside the tank. So at the beginning we put uh, 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 new algae that we catch in the, we cut in the uh, on the rocks and um, we can put them with um, with uh, rocks uh, we 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 broke uh, broke with the algae or we can we can also also um, um, attach them with um, with uh, plastic necklace with we. We put in, uh, we, um, which are uh, fixed in, inside the, um, the concrete. So here we can, with a plastic necklace, attach the, the directly the, the algae to the to the to the concrete. And um, after that, uh, we can <coughs> uh, follow the, the installation of the of several uh, algae. So after four months. Um, the algae have uh, good, uh, good growth, and we can uh, see the first uh, Laminaria digitata shoots um, directly on the concrete, on the, uh, in, on the decoration of the, of the tank. And we can follow here the, the growth of, uh, of the algae here, and here. And we, at the end, the, and the, the life of Laminaria digitata were, were six months. Um, at the end of, um, of Laminaria digitata, there was also um, uh, Ulva, Condrus, and we are going to see again uh, all the, the algae fixing the breeding in the tank. Um, at the 11th month, we, we, uh, we observed uh, wakame, uh, um, Undaya pinificada, so we can follow the, the growth of the, the algae, and the, the growth can be very, uh, very quick, because here you see on the 4th November, and here the 27th of November, so the, the growth is very, uh, can be very quick. Maybe why? Um, the, the, the life of algae can be short enough. <coughs> and uh, at 12, uh, one, uh, one year uh, of uh, exploitation, okay, we can follow the life of, um, the life of um, wakame. And uh, at the end, uh, in March, it was uh, at the the end of life of wakame. We arrived in, in September. We can we didn't have new um, new uh, breeding of uh, algae. So <laughs> you do. <laughs> you see that the video. <laughs> so uh, parameters are between uh, 13 and 17 degrees. Salinity 25 to 36, and, and nitrate, pH. And light is um, between 200 and 300 uh, micromoles. So that is uh, um, almost the same that we use for, for corals. At the beginning of the tank, one of the, uh, my idea was we can uh, grow and um, uh, have many corals in the tank, but we don't know to do with, uh, with macroalgae. So we can do like for corals with good light, 
a lot of light, water movement, good water parameters, good temperature, and uh, that's what you, we use for the algae and what, uh, uh, what was a success. And today we can harvest one to two kilos of uh, ulva. So the species, uh, um, we uh, live in the aquarium, uh, in, in the tank, no, the, the algae we, ca we, we cut and put in the, the tank. Uh, ulva, chondrus, codium, laminaria digitada, undaria pinitificada, coralina longata, uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> And calitamium. Um, so I can see uh, we can see the, the different algae. So the the chondrus. Very quickly the codium. The laminaria digitata uh, shoots. I go very quickly. We have seen that uh, already. Coralina elongata. Calitamnion is a little red, little red algae. We were helped by some grazers, so we, we put that what's something we use also with a reef tank is to use grazers. Is, uh, here was Patella vugata. Uh, and we, we see uh, the, the, its work. Um, Litorina and uh, Aplysia faciata. Uh, not directly in the tank because we harvest um, uh, when the divers and it's uh, the work we have to do to clean the, the tank. It's only to clean the glass and to harvest the, the, the ulva and sometimes to put new algae. Five times per, per year we go to, to cut algae to, to put new algae in the, in the tank. And uh, the aplysia are is in a separate tank because they, uh, to avoid they, they eat all the all the ulva because they eat a lot. So for for aplysia, it's one to two kilos of ulva, uh, fresh uh, ulva per per week. Thank you. Thank you very much for this great presentation. Uh, it's nice to see we are going to algae and having success for, for, for uh, artificial rearing and, their, uh, and their artificial light. Unfortunately, we do not have time for, for, for questions. Uh, if you have questions, do go back to Pierre uh, and, and, and to ah, Philippe, sorry, uh, uh, after, after the session.